Okay, so let's take a look at our ERD again. And let's next we're going to put in the state forest table and set up our foreign key relationship with state. All right, so this time instead of generating the SQL as a first step and then generating the um, and then executing it, we're just going to do it all, all in one one fell swoop. So we'll say J execute bang. We can start database and we are going to pass in the SQL generated by create table DDL. We're going to name our table state forest. And then, all right, so let's do our foreign key first. So that's state ID, which would be an integer. And it references, references state table. Now, we don't need to pass in um, which column on the state table it's referencing because we want it to reference the primary key. So if you don't pass in anything here, it's going to use the, um, the primary key. If we did pass in some value in here, it would use a different um, a different column. But again, we're just using the primary key, so we're good where we are. Let's drop down. So the next value we want to insert is going to be the state forest ID, which is serial. Uh, and this is the PK of uh, this table. And then we need the actual state forest name, which is var car of, uh, let's just do 256, because there could be some really long state forests out there. And then we have acres, which is an integer. And then let's see, so everything closed? Yes. All right. So everything looked good. And I execute that. Get zero back. Let's pull up psql. Now I describe our database. So now we've got the state forest. So let's select all from state forest. Cool. Empty. Everything's good. All right. So let's go ahead and add some state forests. Now, we could go through and manually add these things the same way we did for Alabama, or uh, we could even use multi and sort of you know add everything the way we did for uh, for the for the rest of the states. But what I want to do is create a helper function that will make it much simpler to load state forests, and because we're going to be doing a lot of this, and also in this demo we're going to be reloading a couple times, so that'll just save a lot of time. Um, in the future. So what I want to do is I want to be able to define a simple data structure for all the state forests uh, that I can load up by passing in that the data structure as well as either the name of the state or the abbreviation, which we can use our um, ID for state helper function we created earlier for. So let's go ahead and create this data structure. So I'm just going to call this, uh, we'll do the Alabama state forests first. And let's see. Let's see, okay, so there's that. All right, and I'm actually just going to copy these in so you don't have to watch me type out every single one. I'm grab all these. Okay, so these are all of Alabama State Forests. There aren't a ton. Um, sorry, Alabama. Uh, but that is why you keep public land public. All right, so we've got our data structure. So now we need the helper to do the loading. So let's see, so definition load state forest, bang. Um, and we will pass in um, a state forest vector, state string. And then let's see, so let state ID equals ID for state S. It's the only local var we need. And then we're going to do insert multi uh, into our database into state forest. And we are going to map over the state forest vector. And we will create new hash maps. Uh, and the components of which will be, we'll have a state ID. And that value will be the, the state ID for whichever state we passed in. All right. Um, and then the next thing we want is, I guess we're going to need state forest, um, which would be the very first element of the state forest vector. So this guy, right? Uh, and then we want the acreage to be the second one. So first, so then we want acres, and we want the second value from this. And then for that, closes that. And here we want to pass in 
the state force vector for the map's final argument. Okay, I think I got that right. So now let's try to load Alabama State Forest. So load state forests, bang, al, sfs, and this is for Alabama. All right, cool. So there we go. We've got all our state forests loaded. Let's delete one. Uh, we haven't deleted anything yet. So let's say that uh, poor Macon Forest was sold and is no longer public. Um, so now db, state forest. Uh, so we're going to delete from the database from the state forest table where state forest equals Macon or Macon. Not sure. All right. There we go. So we've altered one record. Uh, so now let's just do a quick query to make sure that we did in fact get rid of it. Query db select all from state forest where state forest equals a parameter. We're going to pass in make it. There we go. An empty result set. So we've deleted it. So the way foreign key relationships work, if I were to delete state, you wouldn't want to have, for, for, our, for our situation, there's different ways you can handle deletion of parent records when there's a foreign key relationship uh, pointing back to it. For what we've set up, it's, it's very naive. We haven't specified a deletion policy. So let's see what happens when we try to delete a state. So if I say, if I want to delete Alabama, and the, the desired behavior is that if a state is deleted, we want all the state forests to go with it. So let's see, so db state abbreviation, and let's do this. We'll, all right, so, all right, so exact same as when we deleted Macon. Only now we're trying to delete Alabama, which is the, which has, which all these state forests point back to. So if I run this, boom, blows up. We get a great error. Update or delete on table state violates foreign key constraint. That's it's handy too. They also actually give you the name of the foreign key constraint. But I'm going to show you how to retrieve that if you know if you were examining something and for some reason you didn't get this back for a different kind of um, constraint exception. All right, so let's scroll down here, get some space. And um, okay, so there's two different ways to do this. You can, because we're in just in dev mode and just kind of screwing around, I'm just gonna drop that table and I'll show you how we should have created it in the first place. So I'm going to execute db and the ddl I wanna use is instead of create table ddl, I want drop table. DDL and I want to drop state forest. All right. So if I run this, what did I do? Oh, that would probably help. All right. There we go. So now I've I've dropped state forest. So if we pull up p sequel, let's do a quick select. Actually, I'm sorry. We'll just do describe tables, and you can see the state forest has been blown away. All right. So let's take a look at our revised ERD. So what we really want here for state forest for this state ID integer, we want to define a deletion policy, which looks like this. Well, really, it looks like on delete cascade. We're also going to do on update cascade, even though because it's pointed at the primary key, we probably don't have to. What this says is that anytime the state record is updated or deleted, you want to cascade that action down to all its children. So if I were to update, let's say, Alabama's state ID becomes eight. I would want all of my state forests that uh, use that foreign key for Alabama to also update to be eight. That's, that's update. Delete means that if I blow away Alabama, I want all the state forests to be deleted as well. This is, um, for the most part, this is usually the, the deletion and update policy that I use on foreign key relationships, but there are, there are exceptions to that, but we're not going to get into them right now. All right, so let's hop back over to Gorilla and let's see, let's create this properly. So it's very similar to what we had before. Um, execute bang for RTB and the DDL is going to be J create table DDL. We want to recreate the state forest table and let's see. So this time 
state ID, still an integer, uh, and before we just had references state, but now we want to do is the on update cascade on delete cascade. So we say references state space on update update cascade on delete cascade. Okay, so now everything else stays the same. So we need a new parameter group with a state forest, or I guess entity group really, serial. Um, this is the PK, timer key. Boom, boom. Um, let's see, state forest is our 256 character var car. And then finally, we want acres, that is int, boom, boom. Oh, okay, so that's good. So now if we create this, and let me just actually, let's, let me just show you what we're creating here. So if I go in and grab this inner statement here, let's take a look at the SQL it creates. So this is the raw SQL, and you know what SQL you want to execute. You can usually figure out how like what, how to compose the SQL statements using uh, the JDBC closure library. So uh, that can be helpful. I mean, I've, I've used that a lot when I'm sort of troubleshooting. Let's repopulate the, we don't really need this cluttering up our view. So hold on for a sec, so let's delete that. And for this, we'll just delete that. And so let's, remember we made that handy, oops. Uh, load state forest function. Well, this is why load state forests, and we will, our variable is ALS of s, and this is for the AL. Okay, so we've added all our state forests back in. Um, so let's just go ahead and run a query to see what we have here. So if we do query db select state forest from, oops, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but whatever, um, from state forest, and we want to count it, so result set function, and we want this to be count. Okay, so we have our six state forests back. All right. So let's try that delete operation again. So where are we? Where's the one that threw the huge exception? Okay. So let me grab this delete. All right, we're gonna run this. All right, so it altered one record um, by deleting it. So now if we were to run this guy again, just make a new one. Now we have zero records. So it cascaded down and deleted all of the child records. All right, so that's so all right. So this is all cool if you're in development mode, everything's fine. But if you are in production, you don't want to be dropping production tables. Like it's just never a good idea. What we'd want to do is modify the constraint, but Postgres doesn't actually allow you to modify um, foreign key constraints in place. What you have to do is you have to actually drop the foreign key and recreate it the way you want it. So let's see. Um, let's we're gonna put Alabama back in our database. Okay, so now it's ID eight. Um, and then we are going to, where's our, all right, we're gonna copy this guy again and we are going to load it. Okay, so now we have everything loaded back up. Uh, so this time, so remember, right now we still have the on cascade delete, uh, on, deal, on delete cascade in effect. So what we want to do is change that to restrict. And what on delete restrict does is pretty much what you saw earlier, uh, where it'll raise an exception if we try to delete a parent table that has foreign key children pointing back at it. So the first thing to do that, like I said, we cannot delete it or we can't modify it in place. So what we need to do is delete it. To delete it, we need to know what its name is. Uh, now we did mention it up here, state forest state ID F key, which is cool. But I'll show you how to grab it if, if, if you didn't know uh, what it was named. So we'll, we'll run a query inside our database. And what we want to do is we want to select 
constraint name from information schema dot table constraints where table name equals the parameter of state forest. Now if I run this, you can see a couple different constraints. So that we've got our primary key constraint. We have um, basically a not null for our primary key. And then we have this guy. This And this is our foreign key constraint. All right, so this is the other way you can get it. So armed with that information, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to delete it. So we'll do j j execute bang db and we want to alter table state forest we want to drop constraint and the name of our constraint so if I run this okay and now let's just do a sanity check so we'll copy this again Make sure it did in fact delete what we expected it to delete, and there we go. So our foreign key constraint is gone. So let's put it back in. So let's see. So we can reuse this bit. So we want to alter table state forest. And this time we want to add the constraint, and we'll call this state forest. Well, let's call this new. So we'll give it a brand new constraint name. It is of type foreign key, uh, and it's a foreign key to on the state ID column, and it references references the state table. And on let's just do on delete uh, restrict. When I try to delete it, it's going to blow up because we've got the restrict constraint on there. Cool. Ish. I mean, that's not actually what we want, so I am, this is probably getting really, really old, but I'm going to delete it again. Um, I'm going to check that it was deleted, and then I'm going to set this back to, this time we'll do on update cascade and on delete cascade. Okay. So I'm not going to run this again, but it fixed it. Okay, so now everything's back to normal. We have we have it set to update or delete when the to match the parent, and we can move on.